day. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by our elected officials, community leaders, and constituents as we announce the Little Haiti Business Cultural District. Today, I would like to introduce Jackson Rochester and Regine Roman, who are co-leaders for this coalition. Regine and Jackson. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. Um, I'm Jackson Rockmister. I'm the president of Habnet Chamber of Commerce. Habnet is the acronym for Haitian American Business Network. What we do is we support and promote entrepreneurship. I want to introduce you to Regine Romain. Can you say a few words real fast? Hi, my name is Regine Romain. I'm the executive director of Haiti Cultural Exchange. Haiti Cultural Exchange works to develop and present Haitian arts and culture. We're really thrilled to be here today under the leadership of Assemblymember Radnis Bichot, and we thank you all for being here in support of our community. Thank you. So, listen, we did this unveiling. We did this unveiling of uh, the pronaming of Muslim Avenue to Boulevard in 2005. The sign was taken down, we're putting it back today. And the person, I have to say, who really spearheaded this uh, initiative is no other than Assembly Assemblywoman, member. Assembly Member Rodney B. Short. in the state of New York in the assembly. And we are here today to announce the Little Haiti Cultural and Business District in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I want to thank my partners um, in crime who's been leading this effort, <laughs> Council Member Jumani Williams, who we're going to hear shortly from, State Senator Kevin Parker, and the Little Haiti Planning Committee. Are you guys here? Yes. yes. <laughs> now I also want to thank Mayor de Blasio for, you know, really pushing this and helping us make this um, today work. We also have um, Deputy Mayor Phil Thompson, who we're going to hear today. We want to thank him for being here. We want to thank Department of Transportation, DCAS. We want to thank St. Jerome, Father Yvonne Pierre, and the Bishop of the Brooklyn Diocese for making sure that this was successful. Later on, you're gonna hear from our Council General, um, Gandhi Thomas, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Borough President Eric Adams, Assembly Member Nick Perry, uh, Senator Charles Schumer, he sent a letter, and Letitia James and Scott String are also um, in support of this initiative. We have a number of community members here that we're really excited about. CB17, Mr. Barrington Barrett is here. We, we have <laughs> Precinct uh, 67, we wanna thank them for helping us make this happen. And Precinct 70th, uh, we also wanna thank, uh, we see Neighborhood Housing Services, as well as uh, Kenneth and Bruno from the Flatbush Pit. And we're gonna hear from a number of Haitian organizations and we're gonna mention them. For now, Nearly a year now, community leaders and elected officials and constituents worked in unison to make Little Haiti a reality. Why? People say why. Why? Why? Well, because Haitians are the largest immigrant group in Flatbush, and it makes more than 20% of foreign-born populations in the Flatbush neighborhood. And for decades, thousands of Haitians have settled here, making this neighborhood the heart of the Haitian diaspora, cultural and commercial corridor, where people come here to worship. People come here to purchase goods and services, eat at Haitian restaurants, come to watch performances, and also to keep each other's company, making Haitian Creole the number one foreign immigrant language here in Flatbush. 
Brooklyn later, Brooklyn's Little Haiti will showcase an authentic Haitian experience via food, art, music, language, and traditions of res residential and commercial stakeholders of the area, driving economic development, yes. tourism, and revitalizing this whole area. This is what it's all about. We are here to reclaim our neighborhoods, to rebuild our neighborhoods. We want to beautify the streets. We want to build cultural centers and museums and art galleries. Yes. We want to bring in decorative lights and, and lamps. We want to have cleaner streets. And we're going to bring programming here. Programming where we're going to have Taste of Haiti and Restaurant Week. And also we want to bring affordable housing. We don't want our residents to leave. We want them to stay here. Yes. Yes. So, right. yes. so we're, in, we're in talks right now of what kind of affordable housing, where are we going to start building uh, affordable housing. We also want to bring more immigration and social services resources uh, for the people here and invite people to learn how to speak Haitian Creole. Woo! Yeah. Now, as we unveil the co-naming of Nostrum Avenue, because we did it once before and then they took the sign down. And for almost 13 years, our streets were not honored with Toussaint Louverture Boulevard. So today we're going to redo it again. Okay? We're going to recognize the Haitian liberator who affected the entire world, including the United States. And we don't even stop here. We are also going to recognize Georges Jacques Dessalines, who's known as the Tiger, okay? yeah. who led us into victory, defeating the French. Yes. Okay? Putting, putting United States in a position to purchase the uh, Louisiana Territory. So we are gonna honor him later on this year by co-naming Rogers Avenue as Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Yes. yes! You see, these men fought for freedom for all of us. The sacrifices that these individuals serve as an inspiration for future black li liberators and civil rights leaders such as Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. And so we will bring, we will build monuments also uh, commemorating our other Caribbean leaders like Jamaican Duty Tati Bookman. Woo! Yes. Like the Grenadian Henry Christophe. Yes. We recognize them too because we are all one under the sun. So Little Haiti will be more than just a tourist destination. It will be a celebration of Haitian cultural and recognition of contributions of Haitians to this country. I want to stress that this project is not meant to unite, to divide. It is meant to unite. I think everyone here will agree with me that when I say Little Haiti, I also say Little Guyana. Yes. I also say Little Trinidad. Woo! I also say Little Pakistan. Woo! I also say Little India. Yes. And the list goes on and on and on. Because we want New York City to say we welcome Haitians in all immigrant communities. Especially, especially when unjust immigration policies are pushing our people out of our community such as the Haitians with temporary protected status. Neither Little Haiti nor Toussaint Louverture Boulevard and Jean-Jacques Dessalines could happen without the planning committee. So I want to give a shout out to everyone in the planning committee in alphabetical order. Jean Cadet, Esther Cajou, Fritz Clairville, Jensen Doisier, James Destinas, Farrah Lewis, David Morissette, James Henry, Edu Hermlin, Rita Pierre, Sam Pierre, Rosemont Pierre Louis, Jackson Rockenstar, Regine Woman, Frederica Steins, uh, Rona Taylor. We also have organizations that have been really in support of us. We have Haitian American United for Progress, LC St. Louis, who's the longest standing Haitian organization ever. And she's in Queens and she is here right in the heart of uh, Nostrand in Little Haiti. Tonel Foundation. Woo! 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 Tonel! Tonel! <laughs> Haitian American Caucus. <laughs> Haitian Community Council, HCC. Life of Hope. 
Haiti Cultural Exchange, Haitian American Network of Chamber of Commerce, the Haitian Roundtable. You're gonna hear from woo. yes, woo. You're gonna hear from Rosemont Pierre Lewis later. We also have Haitian nurses, Haitian doctors, Haitian engineers, Haitian school administrators. We have the Flatbush Junction bid. We have also the Haitian law enforcement officers who are here with us. We want to say thank you to all. Vive IET! And now, without further ado, I would like to take this time to introduce the man who's been with the Haitian community since inception. The man who's making this possible in the city council to pass as a real legislation and making it real. The man who's been my friend, my brother, who's been fighting on the front line for a group of people who's been so um, demarginalized, a group of people who's been ignored, okay? We want to thank Jumani Williams yes. for his strength, yes. for his love. Come on, brother. Bonjour, comment ça va? Ça va, ça va. Montez du apôt. <laughs> Happy Flight Day. Um, I want to recognize the ball president, Eric Adams, who joined us as well. And thank uh, another round of applause, please, for Rodney's be shot. I'm, I'm extremely proud to be here. Um, I'm sad that we have to put this sign back up. I don't know why it was taken down to begin with. Um, but I want to be clear, I'm also speaking as a Anglo-Caribbean. And this is important to speak on that because there's been a lot of issues around why Little Haiti. Little Haiti has nothing to do with not having Little Caribbean. It has nothing to do with not celebrating the rest of our culture. But I want to make it clear, I my best friend was Haitian when I grew up. And I remember him not anglicizing his name so that nobody knew he was Haitian because he was embarrassed. And he was a light-skinned Haitian. And I say that because when we grew up, I remember the jokes about two people in particular, Africans and Haitians. That's right. And I don't think that was coincidental. I know that we celebrate Toussaint and Georgiac for freeing the first people to free themselves from slavery in Haiti. I know that Haitians are one of the islands that have the closest connections with Africa. I know that we are taught that black is not beautiful. We are taught that African culture is not worth celebrating. I believe that is the reason so many folks make jokes and put down these particular communities. If we look at what happened in just the past year or two, where communities were singled out and called shitholes by the President of the United States of America, one of those countries was Haiti. When a community steps up and says, we are gonna push back on the perception of negativity on us, we have to celebrate. Yes. But what I see happen more often is we find a way to say, why are you doing this? So when people step up and say, black lives matter, people say all lives matter. But all lives matter rejects what I'm trying to say with black lives matter. And the reason why I'm saying Black Lives Matter is because people are saying that it doesn't. When the Me Too movement comes back, people will say, why are women saying this? But no, they are saying it because they're saying they're not being heard. So when the beautiful people from Haiti said, we want to have a little Haiti because of the perception of Haitians, because our culture should be celebrated, but it's purposefully pushed back. I must stand with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And anyone of good conscience who understands why these things are happening, shout out to Mark Traeger, who's here from my colleague from the city council, yes, who Mark. understands what's happening, should be celebrating the creation of Little Haiti Woo. as well as Little Caribbean. Yes. And I want to be clear, this is nothing to divide us. We should be celebrating. When yes. one of us moves up, all of us and moves up. Right. Right. This is a celebration. I grew up in a Caribbean church, and it's something about Haiti in particular that's not language. Because we welcome the Panamanians, and they don't speak English. We welcome them into those churches. But Haitians have to create their own church. 
right. When I go to a Caribbean restaurant, everybody goes there. Haitians have their own restaurant. So I celebrate Little Caribbean. But I know when I walk into these boundaries, even though I'm in Little Caribbean, the music will change, <laughs> the language will change, the food will change, and I'm so happy to celebrate the creation of this cultural district today. I'll be so happy to celebrate any other creation that we have. I'll be happy to celebrate Little Caribbean. I'm happy to celebrate our culture today. And that's what this is about. I'm very proud to represent the largest uh, congregation of Haitians outside of Haiti, and I'm gonna say outside of Florida too. They yes. gotta prove that they got it. <laughs> this is a proud day for everyone. Yes. This is a proud day for Haitians, yes. proud day for Caribbeans, proud day for Africans, for Blacks, for New Yorkers, everyone who loves culture. I'm so proud today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Royale. And now we would like to hear from Public Borough President Eric Adams. <laughs> you know, I, I think we could really just close up shop after Jamani Williams' statement. <laughs> he really settled it. And, you know, for those who didn't know, uh, you have to really uh, take your hat off to our assemblywoman who has pushed this issue, brought together the coalition uh, to make this happen, and has been dogmatic about the progress that the Haitian community has made in government. When you see the number of elections on the state level, the city level, and the continued expansion of that, and just to really to have the Brooklyn delegation leader here, uh, City Councilman Mark Traeger, is a real reflection of the power that the Haitian community stands for. And I don't know why it took so long for people to figure out Brooklyn is the port of Prince of America. <laughs> <laughs> always has been, always will be. And just to piggyback off, the, off of what Jemani Williams has stated, I think oftentimes people attempt to look down on the folks from the Haitian community is because they are embarrassed of the history they had. Haitian did not allow themselves to be in chains. Right. They said, right. we're going to fight for our freedom when a whole lot of folks did not fight for their freedom. So they are still trying to demonize and the embarrassment that you did not stand up and do what was right. And today we're saying that the Haitian people are standing up and do what is right. And that's why out of the few streets in the city of New York, there's a street that's going to be named Little Haiti. The big Haitian community fought for it, got it, and now we're here to concretize it with this sign. Congratulations, Ranice. Congratulations, Jamani, and all those who made it happen. Congratulations to the Haitian community. Thank you, Borough President Eric Adams. And now we'd like to hear from the Brooklyn delegation leadership of the City Council, Mark Traeger. All right, Mark. Thank you, Assemblywoman Ranice Chant. Thank you to our great Borough President. Thank you to my outstanding colleague in the City Council who has championed this issue. Jumani Williams <laughs> and all the folks here. So uh, I am, yes, I am a council member, Brooklyn delegation coach here with my colleague, Tony Reynoso, but let me say this. I am also a proud former history teacher. And to me, to me, we are celebrating, yes, a cultural district, but a historic cultural district. You know, the term we hear a lot this year, resistance. Mm. You do not have to lecture Haiti mm. about that term. That's right. Because it was in plantations, on plantations in Haiti, that a resistance movement was born right. that the Western world should be grateful for. Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just America. That's right. But the Western hemisphere. Uh-oh. <laughs> because those movements for freedom, independence, fairness and justice were triggered by folks that said no more. Go ahead, That's Mark. right. And that movement ignited a spirit of independence that traveled beyond the Caribbean to South America, to Central America. And so when folks try to demonize That's right. That's right. or dehumanize That's right the contributions of this precious place called Haiti. Shame on them. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My advice to you, open a book and read it. Yes. 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 Come to Mr. Traeger's history class. Yeah. There should be a little Haiti, not just here in Brooklyn, there should be a little Haiti in Washington, D.C. Yes. Yes. We can begin by changing the occupant at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, we will. That's the occupier. So I am proud to lend my support and my heartfelt thanks as, as someone, my family came here from Ukraine and we are so grateful to live in a free country. But knowing my history, knowing the history of this country, we are in debt. We are in debt to the Haitian people. Yes. We are in debt to you. And anything we can do to double down, to remember and to cherish the legacy, the contributions, the sacrifice, the work even today in education, in healthcare, in legal professions, in social services, in small business, and elected leadership that's growing in stature, and we, 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 we just celebrate that. We will always have your back. So little Haiti, a big thank you. We are going to always, always be with you, stand with you, and appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for that powerful uh, remarks. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, the Deputy Mayor, Phil Thompson, who is here on behalf of the de Blasio, and I must say, Phil Thompson is probably more Haitian than many of us, okay? I'm really excited to have our Deputy Mayor here supporting us, and he is going to do a number of initiatives uh, partnering with um, Haiti, and we're just looking forward to it. Phil Thompson, Deputy Mayor. Woo! Well, I'm uh, really inspired to be here and happy to be here on behalf of the mayor. And I just want to say uh, the mayor is all in and we're all in uh, with this vision, you know, the Petchenville of Brooklyn. Uh, it's also uh, for me, you know, listening to the councilman and it's inspirational. Um, uh, my uh, family originally is from Durham, North Carolina, and 200 years ago, the black community in Durham, you know, free blacks named their community Little Haiti um, because they were uh, inspired by the Haitian Revolution, and that played a big part in the Civil War in liberating four million African slaves here. And I also was a teacher, and you know, uh, as you said, uh, the Haitian Revolution was responsible for the liberation of millions of people throughout the Caribbean, but also United States never would have gone west of the Mississippi That's right. without the Haitian Revolution. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, Little Haiti is really important for Big Haiti, um, and that's something I learned in Haiti. Um, I was in Del Mar 32 not long after in Port-au-Prince not long after the earthquake and there was a community meeting and there was rubble everywhere and so many people had died and and the conversation was we started with a prayer and you know we were reading the bible where jesus says i am the light and someone said there's no light here and then other people said no 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 whenever we gather together to do something together yes. that's important, that is the light. Right. There is light here. And so us coming together, you know, as, as the councilman was saying, us coming together, that is what's going to make a difference in Brooklyn and New York. That is what's going to make Little Haiti a symbol, not just for Haiti, but for all of us, as it always has been. So we're restoring Haiti to its rightful place as a leader in this city and in this nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy Mayor. And now I would like to bring our general consulate, our Haitian De general consulate, Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi Thomas. Bonjour. 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 What a great day. Uh, in the midst of, uh, of this great population, that brings our elected Haitian American 
officials and highlands, I can say, officials in America uh, unveiling uh, this uh, a suite under the name of We Created to San Roberto. Woody is a day, uh, 18 minutes of May, which marks uh, the 215 years of our big color a living symbol of the immortality and individuality of our homeland. I take this opportunity to remind you, dear compatriots of the diaspora of New York, that this flag still contains the sweet and the blood of the heroes who have consecrated our freedom and our independence on the battlefields at Vettier, the bitter Charrier, and in the mountains of the south and of the west, repeating colonialism. I call upon you to meditate on the notion of flag, to reflect on this need for national discipline and on this need for total peace so that Haiti continues its march towards progress and sustainability development. The rituals of the historical dates are not without value of examples. For a youth who must know that is under the threshold of a new history, which will need its energies, its combative ardor, its periodic consciousness, and its sense of dignity for the refoundation of the nation. Because it is what it is. We build the nation that the pieces of the homeland that we call and live us. And as we can see here in Brooklyn and New York, or diaspora, we are, we are moving forward. Yes. And having little Haiti, and as I would say, Haiti, when we look at Haiti, we can talk about freedom without thinking about Haiti. We are the backbone of freedom. Yes. And after we got our independence, we didn't cross our arms. We went to Savannah. We went all over the places in the world to bring freedom. And today, this is a commitment that we have with our electors to continue to let the people in the world to see that Haiti will be always, always a land of the freedom of the people of the world. Thank you very much. Our proud history 
Today we celebrate leaders that understand the unique place in history that Haiti and the Haitian community has. As the Manhattanite, I'm very happy to be in Brooklyn today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now I would like to introduce another leader, another activist, someone who's been at the forefront of civil rights issues, someone who goes to Haiti all the time. He's another one who's more Haitian than many of us. <laughs> we have Dr. Ron Daniels with us today, who has a talk show on WBAI. Where is he? Oh. <laughs> a former presidential candidate on the independent line many, many years ago. We are so excited to have him today. Well, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. I had to be here because the role that I played over the years is to organize African Americans to indeed appreciate the history of Haiti. And I, since 1995 now, I've taken hundreds and hundreds of African Americans and some Haitians <laughs> who are embarrassed about their own history to say that is not what should happen. That much has been said. I would just summarize it by saying the following. Haiti gave us back our dignity when we were on our knees. Haiti shattered the myth of white supremacy. And one of the things I write, and this has already been talked about, and that's why no Caribbean nation, no African nation, anybody should be envious of what's happening or see this as divisive, because we all owe a special debt to Haiti. That's the, that's the point. All of us, for wherever we are, owe a special debt to Haiti. In this country, whether it was Nat Turner, whether it was Tucson, whether it was um, uh, the various the, the slave revolts, they Still knew about in. Haiti. In fact, uh, the slave revolt in Charleston, where were they about to go? They were about to go to Haiti because they didn't have, there was no internet, there was no Facebook and all that, but the word was out that if we can get to Haiti, we will be free. Yes. And so yes. that's the point. The and wherever we are in the world today, Haiti gave us back our dignity. And in that regard, unless Haiti is free, until Haiti is elevated back to its rightful place in the in, in the world history, then all none of us are free. That's the point. And so I thank you so much for this opportunity. We'll always be on the front lines with you. It's a great day, you know, because also we're coming at the history and all of the culture. It's a wonderful day. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Ron, Dr. Daniels. And now, lastly, first of all, I would like to announce that we have the Precinct Community Council uh, President of Precinct 70, Ed Powell, is here. Woo! Thank you so much for being here. And now I would like to call a friend, uh, uh, a friend of us who is Jamaican and African, who has been leading and doing a phenomenal job with the Flatbush Junction bid, Kenneth and Buna. Good morning. Um, oh, sorry, good afternoon. You know, um, today is definitely a, a wonderful day. I'm very, very proud to be here. I just want to give a very short story. I told us some member about this. Um, the day, the weekend after Habnet had their event at the Borough Presence um, Hall, at, at Borough Hall about, um, yeah, about three, three weeks ago, I happened to be in um, Connecticut, in Kent, Connecticut, and um, somebody took me to a lecture. This was by some historian, and he was talking about um, American history, and he mentioned New Orleans and how the um, the British were defeated in New, New Orleans. And um, after his speech, I, you know, he asked if, I knew, if there were any questions. And I said, um, I raised up my hand and I said, um, first of all, are you aware of, do you know about Toshon um, Logacho? Um, and he said, yes, the rebel. I said, well, you call him a rebel. Other, other people regard him as a revolutionary. <laughs> but um, are you aware that without him, and what he did to the to Napoleon's French army, um, New Orleans would not exist. And um, he 
he said, well, that is a discussion for another day. But what, 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 where I'm coming from is it's very important that we know our history. Um, like many of you have said here today, uh, certain parts of the United States would not exist were it not for the Haitian Revolution. And um, we, we need to take that to the bank. So it's been a pleasure to be here. It's been a pleasure to celebrate this occasion with you all. And um, continue to shop at the Flatbush Junction. We have lovely shops out there. <laughs> you know, when you're tired of shopping here. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to recognize Minister John Williams, who's a member of Kush, who's here. And uh, we want to close, but I do want to recognize. Okay, we're going to close. Uh, we're going to have Daniel Elises, who's going to say a closing um, closing prayer, and then we're going to go over to the corner and do the unveiling. I want to mention where's Jensen? Jensen Derosier, where is he? Did he leave? Okay, Jensen's over there. Okay, everybody look at Jensen. Everybody know who he is? Popular guy. He's been a big, big help and big effort in putting this together. He will be performing. And also at his restaurant, Tonel Restaurant, Yes. that's where we are going to unveil Jean-Jacques Dessalines on Rogers and Newkirk. Yes. So we're very excited about that. So now, without further ado, I would like to... Uh, call Daniel Lysus, who's a member of the Haitian clergy, to say the closing prayer. And also, is Bishop Sansari here? No. Bishop? Oh, okay. Okay, so Bishop. Yeah, he was. Bishop Sansari. No, no, Bishop. He will do the closing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, we'll do Okay, one Catholic, one Protestant. Hello, Bishop. Thank you for being here. There is only one Jesus, one Bible, one Holy Spirit. We must all be one. Let's remember that the motto on the Haitian flag is L'Union fait la force. That means that it is true unity that we achieve strength. Donc uh, c'est l'union fait la force, ça veut dire que si nous pas mettre tête ensemble, ni dans l'église, ni dans toute qualité activité, nous pas jamais un bon résultat. So God Almighty, we thank you. You have made us people from many languages, from many nations, many people, many races. But you call us to be one. So we implore your blessing upon Haiti so that Haiti may retrieve unity and achieve success. We pray for the Haitian people so that we will grow in our sense of responsibility as a free nation and that the Haitians here in the diaspora will also be one. Qui fait nous songer que nous sommes peuples, que nous parlons de droit. Diviser toute la journée, c'est toute qualité prétexte pour diviser. Alors que Jésus t'a demandé une fonction de corps. Nous demandons une bénédiction pour nous tous. Et pour que le pays d'Haïti marche, que nous-mêmes, la diaspora, tout, nous rapportons un pile succès. Nous demandons ça au nom de Jésus, en mettre de loi. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, may the grace of the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ be with every one of us. We pray for our men and women in uniform. We pray for our police officers, the men and women who are serving this country. We pray for our president, our governors. We pray for all those men that God will touch their lives. And we pray that those who have problems with TPS or all those immigration problems, that God will use us for these people. May God be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna go over, over to the to the side. Deputy Mayor Phil Thompson will do the honor of unveiling with all of us. He 
actually dancing it. So let's go over there. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We love you. We love you. We love you too. We love you too. We love you too. Council member. Raggy, do you want this? Sorry. Rangis, do you want this wife too? Do you want... Do you want this live too? Yes. Okay. Hey, come on, my leg. Yeah. 